Good afternoon, good evening, good morning to everyone wherever you may be. Uh, my name is Val Gilbert from Alan Heath and today's webinar is an introduction into our latest uh, XCVI based mixing console which is Avantis. Uh, so first of all thanks everyone for joining, I hope you're all well and safe um, and um, that we're going to discuss some interesting things. So. Uh, a little bit of housekeeping while the last few attendants register and come online. Um, you do have a question box in the webinar. Please don't hesitate to ask questions uh, throughout the session. And then my colleague Nick, who's uh, co-hosting this session, will forward some of those questions towards the end and we'll do our very best to answer them. So please don't hesitate. Um, also, I know a lot of people who are already using Avantis might be joining in. So um, please don't hesitate to chip in with any of your comments or the things you love about Avantis and we'll also be happy to share those with any of the other attendees as well. So um, again, before we move forwards on more technical specifics of the product, um, I just wanted to share um, some online resources for you. So if you want to find out more, I'm sure, sure you've already found your way, but um, our website is alan-heath.com. Uh, Things specific to Avantis are alan-heath.com forward slash Avantis. Uh, the latest Avantis firmware is forward slash Avantis forward slash firmware. Um, and then we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, I.O. possibilities, the different stage boxes, etc., that you can connect to Avantis. And you'll find that at alan-heath.com forward slash everything I.O. Now, uh, we do have a whole bunch of online um, webinars coming up. We've got some more things um, on. Uh, DLive. We've also got um, some really nice Q&A sessions with some quite well-known touring engineers uh, and you'll find all that on our website as well at the sessions page as well uh, and also obviously on Facebook we're sharing uh, lots of information about the upcoming things. So without further ado I think we shall crack on and move forwards. Um, so let's go. So um, Avantis. Avantis is the latest mixing platform we released uh, towards the end of last year uh, and for us the idea of Avantis, where it sits in our product range, uh, it was really about what we say is completing the trilogy. So what trilogy? Those of you who, who know our product range uh, will probably know uh, what I'm talking about. Um, the first element of that is DLive which is our largest format uh, flagship mixing console. It's a 128 input channel mixer with 64 configurable buses, um, huge amount of, of mixing power and processing resources. And it's built around our FPGA processing core, which is called XCVI. Uh, a little bit more on that in a couple of minutes. Uh, the other part of this trilogy uh, is our SQ console. Uh, SQ is a 48 channel digital mixer uh, with um, uh, like I said, 48 uh, mixing channels, but it's also built around our XCVI processing core. So for us, it was really natural that in between this 48 channel uh, digital mixer and this 128 channel digital mixer, uh, there was an opportunity in the space within our project range to uh, add something a little bit different. Um, and as we like to do at Alan Heath, to, to put our spin on on the latest technology that we have available. And so we did that and we launched Avantis uh, towards the end of last year. Now we've already had lots of adoptees of our Avantis platform that we're very happy about. Um, and hopefully we'll have lots of stories to share about that in the very, very near future. So let's take a look directly at the physical uh, work surface. Now, we get lots of really positive feedback on the way Avantis looks. It does um, stand out as a console that doesn't look like much else you may have seen um, available on the market. But let's look at the technical specifications of the console and what it can do. So Avantis is a 64 input channel mixer. So you can mix 64 inputs. Um, with the large range of I.O. boxes that you can connect. You can have many, many more channels actually connected to the console. Uh, so you can have uh, up to 400 and something inputs, actually physical inputs connected to the console, but you can mix 64 of those channels. It's also got a 42 bus 
flexible architecture or fully configurable architecture. Now, what I mean by 42 bus uh, could be anything from a mono or stereo ox, a mono or stereo matrix, a mono or stereo groups, uh, your main left right master bus, uh, or your PFL monitoring bus. So you can completely configure your bus setup to match your workflow or the show you're working on uh, that day. So it might be 20 stereo ear, uh, stereo aux mixes, sorry, for, for in ears. Um, it might be uh, lots of mono groups if that's what you need, or if you're distributing audio around a venue that has multiple different rooms and front fills and left, right, and subs and delays and, and a lobby and all that stuff, you might need a lot of uh, matrix mixes. So you can configure your bus configuration in the console the way you want, uh, and we will look at that in a couple of seconds. So like I said, the console is based on our XCVI uh, FPGA processing core. Uh, that runs at 96 kilohertz sampling rate, and that's full time. So the console itself is always running at 96 kilohertz. The processing of the audio always happens at 96 kilohertz. And again, we'll look at that a little bit uh, more depth in a couple of seconds. Avantis is deep enabled, which means that you can run our deep processing algorithms, um, call them plugins if you like, um, of real hardware units that have been emulated and that are available to use on Avantis with our DPAC that we will look at towards the end of the webinar today. And finally, Avantis has 12 stereo effects engines. So you can have 12 different engines, uh, stereo engines running reverbs, delays, uh, phasers, you know, you name it, everything's in there. Um, and what's really nice about these effects engines is that they've got their dedicated stereo returns. So the returns of your effects, where those effects come back into your mixing console, uh, is on top of your 64 channel channel count. So it's 64 mixable channels plus 12, 12 stereo effects returns. So really quite powerful and very flexible as well. So as I mentioned, uh, Avantis is built around our XCVI core. Now we started XCVI with our DLive mixing console. Uh, we then um, downsized that for uh, SQ, and I'm sure many of you are familiar with the processing power of SQ. Um, and then we found a middle ground for Avantis. So XCVI runs, uh, stands for 96 in Roman, Roman numerals. Um, I'm sure you've understood why, because it runs at 96 kilohertz, um, but it also offers 96-bit accumulators, and we will talk about that as well in a second. So it's powerful enough to do 64 input channels, 42 configurable buses, um, and like I said, always running at 96 kilohertz sampling rate. So again, I'm sure most of you nowadays, uh, things have moved forwards. Um, 10 years ago, you talked about sample rate, everyone needed a bit of a refresher course, but I'm sure you all know. Um, essentially, when we run audio processing at 96 kilohertz, it means that we're taking 96,000 samples or measurements of our audio waveform every single second. So the higher the sample rate, the clearer the picture or the better the definition or the higher resolution, call it you know how you want, you have of the audio. And that both goes both for the processing inside the console, but also when we convert our analog signal to digital signal. So the higher the sample rate, uh, the nicer it sounds basically, to put it very straightforward. Um, yeah, so Avantis, always runs at 96 kilohertz. Slightly different to some mixing platforms where, depending on what you want to interface with, you might choose to run at 48 or at 96 or something else. The processing engine inside Avantis is always running at 96 kilohertz. You never change that. There's not an option for you to change. Um, however, if you do need to interface with other things in uh, over digital protocols, um, all of our digital protocols have sample rate conversion inside them. So again, we'll look at that in a couple of minutes, but essentially if you've got amplifiers uh, over Dante and you're using a Dante card in Avantis, uh, that Dante card has sample rate conversion. So you can run that at 48 kilohertz to your amplifiers and the processing always happens at 96 kilohertz. So uh, for you, really straightforward, you don't have to worry about it. Then the 96 bit accumulator. Now, this is a bit of a mystery, but at the same time, um, 
it's it's quite straightforward when you get the idea of this now um, again today is the point is not to get into too much technical jargon but if you think about bit depth what we're talking about is dynamic range of my audio uh, of my signal path so uh, the higher the bit depth the more dynamic range I can handle or the more headroom my mixing console has now if we think about I, I like this picture because it reminds me of old uh, portable games consoles which are actually quite popular nowadays they're coming out of the attics again um, the sound had no dynamic range right so you didn't have quiet and loud signals everything was all at the same volume and it sounded really crunchy now these mixing consoles it just so happens were four bit audio so they had very low dynamic range and they couldn't handle variations in in the sound level um, and essentially what it meant is that the sound was very crunchy and, and didn't sound nice a lot of um, uh, noise generated by by um, the bit depth that's an analogy I don't want to get you confused but essentially what we're saying is the higher the bit depth the more changes in amplitude or the more high signal levels uh, the console can manage now a lot of mixing consoles have 48 bit dynamic range um, that gives you 280 over 280 DB of dynamic range now that's more than enough to handle uh, an input channel you know an, an input channel is very finite in the sense that once you've hit unity gain plus some headroom on your preamp that's the amount of dynamic range you're going to get so you don't have to, to think about that too much and 48 bit is generally more than enough for a single input channel where it comes a little bit more complicated or a little bit more crucial is when we start to sum multiple channels together so on Avantis, for example, we've got 64 channels and we need to sum those channels together. So those of you who've done your reading, who know your stuff, all of you, I'm sure, um, will know that when I sum two coherent signals together, uh, I get plus 6 dB. So when you multiply that times 64 channels, I need to make sure that my summing bus, whether that's a group or whether it's an aux or my main left right bus, when I sum all of my channels together into one of those buses, I need to make sure that that bus can handle the summation of all of those channels together. Now, they're not all going to be coherent, but if they were coherent, I need to make sure that my master bus can handle all of that summation happening. And we can do that on all of our uh, XCVI based consoles because with our XCVI FPGA processor, we have 96 bit accumulators. So all of our summing happens at 96 bit, which essentially offers over 550, uh, 570 something dB of dynamic range. So what does that mean for you as an engineer in, in the real world? Because it's a lot of numbers, it's very technical. Essentially it means, I, I don't know if it's happened to you before, it's happened to me many times, is you're mixing on a console and you sound check your drums and, and it sounds really, powerful you've got great dynamics going on sounds really big and then when you start to add more channels onto that uh, mix the, the more you put together the more summation you 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 add uh, the sound starts to get kind of not muffled but you lose the the definition you lose the dynamics you lose the energy that you had when it was just the drums right so that's typically the summing bus running out of dynamic range or running out of headroom well, with Avantis, that's not going to be a problem. So with 570 something dB of dynamic range, you can have all of your inputs at uh, peak level summing together and the master bus will be able to cope with that and give you great dynamics on your main bus. And, and when you mix on Avantis or SQ or, or DLive, you will, you'll understand what I mean because it really just sounds fantastic. So uh, another really important part of what our XCVI core offers is full mix coherency. So uh, again, most people know what mix coherency is. So some call it um, uh, delay compensation, some call it phase coherency, some call it um, automatic time alignment. Um, what we mean by mix coherency is that I can take an input directly to a main bus to an output, or an input to a group to a main bus to an output, or an input to a group to a main bus to a matrix to an output, and they all leave the console 
perfectly time aligned or perfectly in phase or or perfectly coherently now if that wasn't the case what i would get is comb filtering between uh, various different channels so if i had uh, the same signal going to two different processing paths if they leave at a different time i have a, an offset in time or an offset in in uh, summation so i get cancellation which is essentially uh, comb filtering so that's not a problem with our xcvi core based mixing platforms uh, so with avantis what that means is that whatever my routing however i uh, run my signal through different processing chains they will all be fully mix coherent. Now, not only are they fully mix coherent, but they're fully mix coherent at 0 0.7 milliseconds latency. You will find other consoles that offer full mix coherency, but they usually do that at a cost of time. So you usually have to switch on a mode that is a high latency mode that offers you mix coherency. And it's not rare that that latency will be eight, nine, sometimes more than 10 milliseconds latency. Now for front of house, that can be acceptable, maybe, and nowadays less and less, um, but definitely not acceptable if you want to mix uh, in-ear monitors, for example. Now, why is that important for you as an engineer at the end of the day? Uh, well, it means that as an engineer, you can be more creative with your mix and you don't have to worry about that side of things being managed. So. You can do mix coherency on any digital console if you do some complicated routing where you run all of your channels through a group, or when you do some parallel processing, you take them out of the group and you delay different groups one another. It's, it's a lot of hard work uh, and, and it will automatically um, induce very high latency in your, in your input to output latency. That's not the case with Avantis. You as an engineer, you don't have to worry about it. The console is always mixed coherent, so you don't have to activate a mode, and it's mixed coherent at 0 0.7 milliseconds latency. So more uh, creative mixing for you as an engineer. And on top of that, it offers more creative tools for monitor engineers as well. So, you know, um, eight or 10 milliseconds of latency for in-ear monitors for a monitor engineer, it's just not an option. It's, it's not something that's viable today. Um, but for monitor engineers to be able to use parallel bus compression, for example, and send that to in-ears, it allows them to be more creative uh, and to, to offer, you know, a little higher level of, of mix techniques for their uh, customers, basically. So that's some of the main benefits of using our XCVI core. Let's have a look at the hardware. So Avantis is built in this full metal chassis. Now it's not obvious when you've not seen one in the flesh, but the whole frame of this console is built out of metal. So there's no plastic in there. And that's a commitment that we took inside the company a couple of years ago, is that moving forward, we wouldn't use um, non-recyclable materials in any of our mixing consoles uh, moving forwards. Uh, it's, it's just an ethical choice that you know people should be making today. Um, but on top of that, which is which is great, we also also have to offer a very um, robust uh, platform, a mixing console that's been designed for the sort of abuse that mixing consoles can sometimes see when they're out on the road. So it needs to be strong, rigid, um, at the same time lightweight, which is is something that you get from this tubular structure, which is which is fantastic. Um, but we don't just say that we actually go through the steps so when we design this platform we put some prototype consoles on a pallet in a truck and we drove it over some of the toughest terrain you'll find anywhere in the world um, for days on end and we logged all of the vibration and the temperature and the humidity that the platform was exposed to uh, to make sure that well when you the customer receive the console for the first time but also when you use it in your day-to-day -day, uh, applications even though we don't want to throw consoles off trucks sometimes it happens uh, we want to make sure that this console can can uh, can take it so that's definitely the case and we've tried <laughs> we have tried so so yeah so moving on on the hardware obviously the first thing that stands out is these two really large 15 inch full hd touchscreens they're really bright, they're really reactive, they're fast, so they're a pleasure to work with. Um, the black 
interface or the dark interface means that these are really at home um, in critical applications like theaters where you can't um, you can't get away with having a bright con uh, you know a bright light console at the back of your room. Uh, so this goes down really well, but at the same time it's all very clear and and easy to see. Uh, then on the right hand side of the console. If I can get my mouse up on screen, there we go. Um, you'll see some custom rotaries here, which are called the fast grab tab. Um, and then we've got some custom rotaries at the bottom of the screen here. And I'll talk about those a little bit more later on. We've also got 24 soft keys spread across the console. So uh, there's 16 here, six here, and two over there. Uh, did I say 16? Uh, yes, it is 16. Um, then six in the middle and two over the left hand side. And this is really nice having soft keys spread over the surface. It means that I can configure them to have separate functions depending on what I want to do. So, you know, this might be on the left hand side, I might have my tap delay and mute unmute my delay for my lead vocal, for example. Uh, then I'll usually have the six in the middle configured for my scene store next previous and go buttons um, and then i can have a range of different functions here but having them spread out across the console uh, is really nice when it comes to customizing your workflow um, you'll also notice obviously two banks of 12 faders and each of these banks has six layers uh, so lots of real estate when it comes to actual physical faders as well uh, you've got a uh, headphone uh, plug on the front of the console just underneath the armrest and a USB uh, to store and load your show files but also for USB recording uh, which I'll touch on a bit more in a couple of seconds. Now you'll notice that there's no overhead uh, flexible lights on this console and that's a good thing right um, because all of the workflow because all of the things you need to see is happening on the screens there's actually no need for having overhead lighting on the console, which is great. It, it reduces light pollution, if you want to call it that way. Um, you know, uh, uh, reflections on the surface and stuff like that. Um, but for us, having a lot of the workflow based on the screens uh, is a great tool for us in terms of uh, developing and moving forwards. You know, as soon as you put a key on a console or a rotary and you write something down next to it, that key will never have another function. It's stuck to that. Uh, if you put a button on a surface and it's got a, a channel number on it, that, that button is stuck on that. So the more we take features onto the screen itself, uh, the more flexible we can be in the way we uh, optimize workflow, we add more features in the future, um, and we allow the surface to be sorry, customizable to the way you want to work. So it really is great um, to have a lot of custom functions on the work surface to suit the way you want to work as well. So all of the soft keys are retro lit, all of the rotaries have LEDs on board, and you've got the new, new, sorry, nice two screens where you can see what's going on. Uh, the only thing you might need to have some visual feedback on uh, in the dark, in the back of a dark room, is the fader positions. And what we've done is we've integrated uh, LED uplighting inside the armrest, which is actually uplighting the fader positions. So even in the dark, you can see exactly where the faders are, and you've got a nice discrete uh, work surface where you can see exactly what is going on. Right, so let's have a look at the back of Avantis. So on the back of Avantis, uh, some pretty straightforward, obvious things. Uh, we've got 12 analog line output connectors on XLR uh, and two stereo AES outputs. Now those stereo outputs can do 44.1, 48 and 96K uh, AES outputs. Then we've got 12 analog mic line inputs on XLR connectors and a single stereo AES in, which can take a very wide range, I think from 30 something kilohertz to 192 kilohertz on AES input. So it'll take anything you throw at it pretty much. Then we have a USB connector on the back of the console as well. Now this is really nice if you want to have a flash drive stored in your dock box connected to here permanently, for example. And again, the same as the one on the front, you can use this connector for stereo recording, firmware updates, or for storing your shows, uh, your library, or any other data that you want to uh, store on the console. We also have two 128 by 128 card slots. 
Now, these are the same card slots that you will find on DLive. So if you've got DLive cards, they are compatible with Avantis as well. There's a whole range of different cards. So we've got Dante 64x64 and 128x128. And these Dante cards can run at 48K and 96K as well. Uh, what's nice with these cards is the 64x64, for example, uh, runs at 48 kilohertz and it's 64 by 64 channels. And if you up that to 96 kilohertz, it still remains 64 by 64 channels. So you don't divide your channel count by two if you double your sample rate. Same for the 128 by 128. It's 128 channels at 48K or at 96K as well. Uh, we've got a Waves card, we've got a MADI card, we've got some AES uh, EBU input and output cards as well. Uh, and we also have GigaRace cards as well, the same as on DLive. And this will allow me to connect my Avantis to even more IO possibilities in terms of stage boxes, but also if I want to connect to a second uh, Alan Heath mixing console uh, to do split front of house monitor mixing if I want to, for example. Then on the back panel, we've got a word clock IO, so either in or out, so I can give clock to someone or take it from someone. Um, and we've got a couple of network ports on the back as well. Now, these network ports can obviously be used to put a wireless access point uh, if I want to use the iPad apps that are available for Avantis, but they can also be used to connect to IP controllers. So there are different size IP controllers, uh, IP1, IP6, and IP8. You can check that out on our website. Um, I've got an IP8 just here behind me. Um, so this is an eight fader 16 soft key uh, external controller. So I can put pretty much any channel I want on each of these faders and I can use these as soft keys exactly the same as the soft keys on the surface of the console. Now, not only is it eight faders and 16 soft keys, but it's also got six layers as well. So that's a huge amount of extra real estate if I want it. So if I wanna have all my DCAs always available, for example, I can do that. Or if I want to, I don't know, maybe uh, in festival scenario, if I want to have my background music and my MC that's introducing the bands, you know, as a, as a system guy, I can have that to one side. While the band engineer is stood in front of the console getting everything ready, I'm not getting in his way or flipping through layers to get to those channels that I need to have available all the time. So, yeah, again, check out our IP controllers on our website. Uh, really nice and flexible. Um, then we have our S-Link port. Now, those of you who are already using our SQ consoles will know all about our S-Link port. Uh, our S-Link port allows us to connect to uh, our different IO expanders, I'll show you in a second, um, but also our me personal monitoring system. So um, what's important to understand about S-Link is S-Link itself is not a protocol. So like you know, Dante or Wave Sound Readers or MADI is different digital audio uh, protocols, uh, S-Link is not one in itself. Our S-Link port is an automatic switching port which will switch to whichever protocol you connect a box to within our Allen Heath protocols. So we have GX, DX um, and AR or DSnake from our older generation stage boxes uh, or our me personal monitoring system protocol and whichever one of those you connect to our S-Link port, the S-Link port will become that protocol. So if you connect a DX box to this, your S-Link is now a DX port. If you connect um, an AR box to this, uh, that uh, S-Link connector becomes a D-Snake port. So really straightforward, easy for you to use, plug it in and it works out of the box. So let's look at the IO that we've got. So there's a, va a vast range of different uh, boxes that you can use with Avantis. Um, anything from 12 outputs to 48 in 16 outs with every different variation that you can imagine. Now again, pop onto our website. There's a tab called Everything IO. You select Avantis and it'll show you all of the different IO boxes that are compatible uh, with Avantis or, or any other console if you're curious. Uh, one that suits really well Avantis is the GX4816. GX4816 is 48 uh, DLive class preamps, 16 outputs, runs at 96 kilohertz, and it's got an extra two DX ports on board. So I can connect one cable to my Avantis, to my GX4816, and from there I've got two ports where I can add up to 32 in-out with extra stage boxes. So I can have 
uh, a huge amount of inputs and outputs running through a GX 4816. What is nice with the GX 4816 as well uh, is that second DX port, if you plug in our me personal monitoring system, it will automatically switch to me um, uh, protocol, meaning that you can use our personal monitoring uh, boxes as well, which are small boxes where each musician can mix their own uh, in-ear monitor mix. Really nice and something to check out. Right, so we've looked through most of the hardware. Again, if you've got questions, please don't hesitate and we'll get to those in a couple of minutes. Um, but what I'm gonna do now is talk about the workflow. So continuity UI. Um, we've called it continuity UI because we feel that there's a continuous flow between the screen and the actual physical controllers on the screen. So we're gonna look at how the work surface can change depending on my workflow and the way I can set up different custom rotaries uh, and soft keys for the functions that I want. So I'm going to switch over to my webcam. So hopefully um, this will work smoothly. Oh, come on. There we go. Um, hopefully that should bring up my Avantis and then I just need to stop that. And hopefully you've got my Avantis full size on screen. Um, now, if you're on Android, you might have to swipe to one side to come off the presentation page and to go onto the webcam page um, to have a look. But theoretically, um, you should all be getting that. If not, type something into the question bar and Nick will let me know. But hopefully that's all good. So let me just slide over here and I will move my little setup across so you can hear me there we go so i'm looking at one of the screens on my avantis right now um, and i'm in bank view now what bank view is uh, is an overview of all of the channels that are let me just adjust that a smidge there we go um, is an overview of all of the channels that are assigned to the faders in the given layer so now i'm on layer a uh, and i've got my 12 faders and i've assigned different channels to those faders. Now I can assign any channel I like to my faders. So any of my 64 input channels, any of my 42 configurable buses, or any of my DCAs can go onto any of those faders. And that's really straightforward to do. So I just come into my setup and I go to control and strip assign. And now I've got bank one, which is the left side of the console. Bank two is the right hand side. And I'm on layer A. And if I want to drop a DCA or maybe a different input channel here, I want my lead vocal. I grab my lead vocal, I drop it in. And now this last fader here, this channel here with the fader that goes with it, is now my lead vocal. If I want it to be a group, I go to my groups, I grab a group, I drag and drop, and I pop that in, and now it's a group. If I want to do multiple channels at the same time, I can do that too. I grab all of my drums. There we go, and I drag and I drop them down, and I've assigned all of my drums to those faders. And I can do that over the two banks and um, all of my six layers. So really powerful, but easy to use in the way I configure all of my uh, layers. Now, moving over to my configurable architecture when it comes to my buses, and that again, couldn't be more straightforward. So when I set up my console, and I know how I want to configure my architecture, I go to audio, sorry, to config, and the first tab is mixer config. And here you can see I've got group, effects, aux, matrix, PFL, and main bus, and I've got the option of them being mono or stereo. So here I've got, for example, um, four mono auxes and three stereo. I don't need so many mono auxes, but I need more stereo. I can turn those up and I can choose however many of each bus I have. Now it tells me on the right hand side, out of my 42 configurable buses, how many I have left over. So here I've got two, and I might need an extra stereo group, so I'll add that, and I've used all of my resources. So once I'm happy with that, I press apply, that's gonna shut down my audio engine, reconfigure the bus architecture, unmute the console and bring it back online again. And it takes a few seconds, um, it's fairly straightforward. So I've got the configurable architecture of my buses 
and I'm good to go. Right, let's have a look at the actual physical workflow of the console. So here I've got all of my uh, inputs and I've got a parallel uh, compression for my drums, which happens to be a group. And then on the last channel, I'll quickly change that and I'll drop a my main master fader in to that last channel. There we go. So that's my main left right bus there. So I'm going to go back to bank view, which is my overview for all of those channels. And here what's really nice is that I've got an overview of my signal flow from input to output of the channel with my preamp, my preamp um, status. So whether I've got phantom, whether I've got my pad on or off, whether I've got a polarity reverse, uh, reversal, sorry, um, and whether I'm using any of my tube emulations, which I'll talk about in a second. Then I've got my gate, an insert point, filters, high pass, low pass, full band parametric EQ, gate, a second insert point, my pan, and then my channel select down at the bottom with metering for gain reduction and for my input level as well. So at any point, if I want to get to one of those workflow functions, I can just press it and it opens up my preamp page. If I want to go straight to my compressor, I press that and it opens up my compressor page. So really fast to get into the workflow, but once I'm in there, my signal chain goes across the top of the screen. So preamp, filter, gate, insert, parametric EQ, compressor, insert, and channel delay. So very, very straightforward in terms of workflow. Now, um, let me come back to the surface itself. You notice right now uh, I've got these 12 rotaries across the top of the faders or underneath my, my um, screen. And these faders can have any custom function I want. So I've got three fixed functions, which are the buttons over here on the right hand side, and that's gain, pan, and send. So right now, these are my gain rotaries for my individual channels. If I press pan, then they immediately become my pan function, so I can pan left and right. And if I press the last one, which is sends, they then become the send level for a selected mix. So right now I don't have an aux selected, but if I select one of my aux channels, this is now my send to aux one. So it means I can do send levels on these rotaries without flipping my faders to sends on faders. So I can have my faders um, for mixing my front of house and still have access to my aux mix levels as well. Really nice and handy. I then have three custom functions on the right hand side and there's a variety of different functions that I can assign to these and there's more coming as well in the future. Now I set these up for my workflow where key one is my four band parametric EQ. So I've got my low, my low mid, my high mid and my high with gain, Q, and frequency. So very easy to EQ quickly if I want to. I've got access to my different bands and I can do my EQ that I want very quickly. Nice. My second key is my dynamics. So my compressor and my gate. So I've got threshold, depth, attack, hold and release for my gate. And I've also got a really nice little feature here, which is a histogram, which shows me over the past 10 seconds. I don't know if you can see that happening as I change the depth of that compressor, uh, whether or not my gate has been open or closed over time. So it's nice to be able to see what my gate is doing over time. On the right hand side, same for my compressor controls. So threshold, ratio, makeup gain, attack and release times. And again, I've got that. Um, that little window uh, histogram that's what I was looking for that tells me what's happening over time with the compressor, whether it's compressing or not. So nice little visual feedback to have there. Uh, the last key over on the right hand side, I've set up to be my high pass filters. So my high pass um, filter, I've got directly on a rotary there. So when I'm mixing, you know, gain, pan, send level, EQ, compressor and gate and high pass filter. So really, really fast in terms of workflow. Again, I can custom configure that to do whatever I want um, to suit my workflow in the best possible way. Now we're gonna look at these three rotaries on the right hand side, which we've called our fast grab tab. 
Uh, why? Because they're fast and you grab them. And when you grab them, you have a tab that appears on the side. Now, these rotaries, again, I can custom configure to be any function I want pretty much. So right now what I've got here is my first rotary is the selected channel. So I select a channel and that becomes the send to my reverb one or my first effects engine uh, for the selected channel. So I've got it for my drums. I do a bit for my snare, for my snare bottom and for my toms and I'm done. And then the next two rotaries I've set up to be my compressor threshold and my makeup gain for my compressor but you could set these up to be anything you like. So they might be an effect send, but they might be an aux send for monitors. Now what's really nice is that you can set these up separately to be, uh, sorry, this one, um, functions on the left screen and functions on the right screen. So on the left screen, I might have what I just described, but on the right hand screen, what I've done, for example, is I've locked the rotaries to a specific channel. So the first rotary at the top, is always my reverb for my lead vocal. So whatever page I'm on, whatever I'm doing, I grab that rotary and it's my lead vocal reverb, whatever I do. Uh, it might be a mix. So if my lead vocalist wants more voice in their ears, I don't have to think about it, doesn't, don't need, sorry, don't even need to select her channel. I grab that rotary, it's always her in-ear mix to herself. So really nice to be able to configure these and to have some of them locked to a channel, locked to a function. So really fast to uh, configure. You noticed uh, probably that when I grabbed it the first time, it appeared and then disappeared. So I can set that to change time if I want to. So now it's two seconds, it comes out and then disappears by itself. If I want it to stay out, I can do that by pressing the view button at the top. So I can have that by the way I like. Um, so that's pretty much the most of it in terms of how configurable and easy the workflow is. Now, one more thing that is across our platforms that I did want to show you are functions like the copy, paste and reset functions. Now, I'm just going to bring this up a little bit, hopefully, so you can see. Uh, there we go. Just about on the left hand side. So, oops, sorry. Bottom left here, you've got three keys which are copy, paste, and reset. Now, imagine you've got six or eight tie mics on a corporate event. You've EQ'd the first one, you're happy with that, and you want the same on all of your channels. If I hold the copy button, it shows me all of the parameters on the screen, and I can copy my EQ, and then I hold my paste key, and really quickly, just by tapping my channels, I've now pasted that EQ across all of my different channels. Really fast, really easy. If I'm not happy with that, by holding the reset button, I can tap those EQs and reset them as well. Now, those copy paste reset uh, functions I can use on my preamp section, on my gates, my compressors, anything I want. Um, and it's a really fast, smooth way of working as well. So, with that, I'm going to come back to my on screen feed, hopefully, um, as soon as I can. There we go, hopefully we should have that back. Um, and I'm gonna bring my webcam as well. Lots of buttons to press. I'm not a video guy, but I'm managing not too bad. There we go, I'm back. So, our Avantis uh, has some advanced processing options available. Uh, we have what is called the D-Pack. Now, on board Avantis standard, you have uh, compressors, all your parametric cues on your inputs and output channels. Um, every single bus has its own graphic EQ full time. So every single output bus, uh, every single of the 42 buses has uh, a full time uh, 30 band graphic EQ available that you can use all at the same time if you want. Uh, you're not limited in resources. And as soon as you re register the console online, uh, you'll get some other graphic EQ models as well as the tube stage preamp. Now, really quickly, I wanna go through these and then I'm aware of the time, so we'll take some questions. Um, we have the D-Pack, which is an optional add-on to the console, which offers the full range of uh, deep processing to Avantis as well. So what does it unlock? It offers 16 Dynate engines. So you'll have 16 uh, engines of dynamic processing, which is a four-band multi-band compressor 
and a four band dynamic EQ. And you can insert these on your input or output channels in mono or stereo, depending on the, the type of channel you're inserting it on. You also have access to our dual stage valve model, which is a two stage, uh, so two different valve preamp uh, emulation from a very well known hardware unit uh, that allows you to add harmonic distortion to your input channels. And once you've added your DPAC, you can use this dual stage valve on every single input channel at the same time. So you've got essentially 64 of these uh, available that you can use all the time uh, on every single channel. Then we have some uh, historical uh, compressor emulations that I'm sure you know very well. Um, and again, these models, when you've activated DPAC on your Avantis console, uh, are available on every single input channel at the same time and every output channel at the same time as well. So I just wanna make that very clear because I get the question quite often. Yes, you can have 64 of these running at the same time on all of your input channels, plus 42 of these running on all of your output buses as well. So that's 106, if I my math is not too bad, um, running at the same time. There's no limited resources. You don't have to put them into a rack and patch them into your channels. They go in the compressor slot that you have on every single channel. So you can use all of those all the time without any limitation. Um, the last thing I wanted to touch on really quickly, uh, and then I'll take your questions, is our AMM auto mic mixer. So we have 64 channels of auto mic mixer available. So some of you are aware of different names of auto mic mixers. Very handy for corporate events means that it will auto manage the highest input uh, and open that channel and leave the others muted or as if you had gates on all the channels essentially. Um, really good for corporate stuff so only the person talking their channel is open and then when someone else talks uh, it basically mixes all of those mics together but there's more uh, information on our AMM available on our YouTube channel and on our website of course so I think that kind of brings me to the end of our uh, introduction to Avantis um, I'm going to ask my colleague Nick to slide into one side there we go hi Nick um, and hopefully he has some questions for me that I will do my very best to answer. I do indeed. And uh, thank you, by the way, for the presentation. I really enjoyed that. Uh, thank it was you. Very informative. Um, now, there's a couple of questions on uh, whether a recording or the webinar will be available. And yes, we will make one available on our webinar channel. Uh, so the easiest way to get there, I shared the link in the webinar chat. But uh, if you don't have that link, just go to our website, follow the, the link to the Alan Heat sessions, and there's a link in there to all of the recordings, including some of the uh, recent uh, other webinars from, from Val. Um, there's also a question on, uh, uh, inevi inevitably, uh, on feature requests, Val, and we'll go through some of, of these. Um, uh, also, some people asking about local pricing. We can't really give you local pricing for Avantis. Uh, speak to our distribution partners, essentially. Now, Val, some for you. Um, first oh, one on the list, editor. Will there be an online offline editor for Avantis? Yeah, absolutely. So those of you who are familiar with our direct editor available for DLive, um, something similar is in the pipeline and that's gonna be made available as soon as possible. So um, yeah, watch this space. Hopefully we'll have that. Uh, again, that'll be an offline online uh, similar to director. Uh, there's also questions on uh, will there be a larger one and will there be a 19 inch rack mountable one so on, on one side and the other on the scale um, nick do you want to take that i, I can take it yes <laughs> uh, as head of product i suppose <laughs> that's one of my uh, jobs to do um there isn't any immediate plan uh, it's not something that it's in active development however as always we're always thinking of what's next what's the next product what should we start designing now so i guess it will depend uh, on on demand from the users from our customers and we can always uh, assess uh, any more models in the range but nothing coming in the short term just to uh, make that clear um val uh, someone is asking whether the touch sensitive faders can be used to select a channel 
Uh, at this point, no. Um, most of the feedback we had from engineers is don't do it, whatever, because in live it's not generally something that people use. Um, but again, definitely a feature request that we will uh, uh, investigate if it's something that, that's usable. But at the moment, no, you cannot select channels with uh, touch sensitive. Now, um, I didn't go into too much detail on the touch sensitive faders. Uh, I don't have it activated, but you do have the option with the touch sensitive fader when you put your fingers down on one or multiple faders uh, of highlighting the uh, little select box at the bottom of the screen. So if you're kind of uh, mixing by wire or just kind of, you know, trying not to be too hand, head down onto your console, um, you can see which faders you actually have your fingers on just by looking at which one is highlighted in the select box at the bottom. So uh, that's what the touch sensitive faders are there for at this point. Um, next question from Dan is, has it got multi-track recording like SQ on board or how would you go about multi-track recording? Hi Dan, yeah we do get that question quite a lot. Now for us it doesn't make sense on a 64 channel mixing console to offer uh, direct to USB multi-track recording uh, because the limitation at 96k is is 16 channels, so it's kind of a bit of a stretch between 64 channel mixable and 16 channel recording. So uh, the easiest solution for that is to add a Dante card or maybe a Wave card um, to do multi-track recording that way. Uh, or if you've got a MADI interface, you might want to do it over MADI. Um, you know, it, it's the most powerful and most flexible solution. Now, uh, when it comes to USB recording, one thing I didn't mention during the presentation um, is that we do have the possibility to uh, record and playback stereo files uh, from USB, but we also have an internal flash drive as well uh, to and from which you can copy uh, audio files. Now, um, that's really practical because it means that I can record into my internal flash memory and only at the end of the show plug in a hard drive and transfer it over if I want to um, and keep my USB key just for my show files, for example. Um, but it's also got another uh, attractive feature, at least I find that really attractive. Um, having been on many events where, um, I don't know, it might be a jazz festival and I don't have any jazz music on my laptop and it never misses that the organiser comes up and says, oh, can I have some background music, please, while people walk in or between the bands? And if I don't have any jazz music, I'm desperately scrambling to find something that I can put on that's not... Um, offensive you know obviously uh usually ends up being Jay Cu jamie cullum or something like that but um so it's i think it's a really nice touch for a rental company to be able to send out a console package where they've already uploaded some some content onto the console itself so it's going out on a jazz festival upload some jazz tracks onto the console so you don't have to worry about does the engineer have some music you know you've customized your package for your client and i think it's a really nice touch to think about those sort of uh, options. Um, and those audio files, uh, on top of that, they can be WAV, uh, FLAC, or MP3, and it'll play them back from the console as well. So flexible and quite powerful as well. Okay, there's uh, quite a few questions on uh, connectivity and connecting different mixes together and so on. So I'll try and combine a few together. Uh, the question is, uh, can I link an Avantis with another uh, Allen Heath digital console, or can I link it with any other uh, console from any other brand, uh, and with, with what protocol? Uh, and in the case of linking with another Allen Heath console, uh, what do I need to do a, a front of house monitor split, for example? Sure. So the first obvious way of linking two consoles together is uh, using the S Link port. Now I can uh, connect my S Link port to uh, a D Live or to an SQ. So SQ, for example, I can do S Link to S Link ports, but then I don't have an S Link port to go to any of my stage boxes, right? So either you have an S Link card in your SQ and that goes to your stage boxes and then you link the two together, um, or the other option is you have a Giga Ace card in the Avantis and you link from the S Link of the SQ to the Giga Ace card and then your stage boxes go to the S-Link port on your Avantis. So, uh, and the same for DLive as well. So, Giga Ace card in a DLive or in the Avantis, and with that combination, you'll be able to connect the two together. Um, 
Now, with other consoles, yes, you can. You just need to make sure you have the protocol that allows you to interface. So, uh, without naming other any other names, obviously, um, but Dante is the obvious one. So, you could have a Dante card, and if your other platform is using Dante, you could connect Dante cards together or Dante um, networks together and share inputs of, of either with, with each console. Uh, depending on what you might have on the other end. So yeah, multiple consoles connected together, absolutely an option, and various configurations depending on which consoles those are. Uh, okay, and on to a more tricky one. Uh, I know you answered a similar one this morning in, in the other session, Val. Uh, if you have a CDM or any DLive rack, um, can you actually uh, s connect to it with the Avantis and also control the preamps? Okay, so again, yes, you can. So um, you'd need to have a GigaRace card in your uh, CDM or your DM or your DLive rack, um, and that GigaRace card would need to be connected either to the S-Link port on the Avantis or having another GigaRace card in the Avantis and connect the two GigaRace cards together. Um, you could absolutely share the inputs from the DLive rack to the Avantis. However, you will not have remote control of the preamps uh, directly on the Avantis. So you'd need a DLive um, surface or a laptop running director to be able to control those preamps um, as well. And you wouldn't have access to any of the processing either on the Avantis. So you'd only see those as uh, digital uh, inputs and you wouldn't have a preamp. You'd just have your 24 dB of digital uh, trim, negative or positive. So you can, but yeah, you, you'd need a, uh, something to control the, the DLive rack. And again, finishing up the connectivity theme, uh, can you mix different boxes, stage boxes of different sample rate on the same S-Link port? Uh, very quick answer is I'm, I'm afraid not. So an S-Link port um, will switch to the uh, protocol of the first box which is connected to it. So if you connect a DX box to the S-Link port, it will be a DX port essentially. Uh, and there's no sample rate conversion between the two boxes. So you can't have a DX, you cannot have a DX box and an AR box, for example, connected on the same uh, network with, with the same S-Link port. So it's one or the other, either at 96 kilohertz or at 48 kilohertz. Uh, here's an interesting one uh, from Jeffrey. Uh, he says he's, he's been using an analog mixer for many years and he loves the preamps. Uh, I believe he says it's an S SL3000, it might be a GL3000, uh, I don't know. But um, basically the question is, what's the difference in your opinion, Val, when comparing analog preamps to digital preamps? Well, my opinion is highly debatable. Um, <laughs> um, I'm going to be completely honest with you. Um, my first experience with uh, one of the newer Alan Heath mixing consoles with a, was with a DLive on a show um, a few years ago now, and I'd never seen one before. I, I'd seen them, but I'd never mixed on one before, um, and I had no one to help me as well. So I'll go a little bit beyond your question. Um, I walked up to the console, the band was on stage starting a sound check, and I had no one to help me at all uh, first time walking up to it. and. I can't be more honest, but tell you that it was an absolute breeze. I walked up, I figured everything out. You know, when the kick starts and you've got to get it going, you don't have time to figure out what's happening. How does this thing work? So it took me the best part of 15 seconds to figure out how to do my gain, my filters, my compression, my EQ. It's it's all there. So that's the first thing. Um, but also having used analog consoles for many, many years, um, I'll, I'll say the same thing. I didn't have to worry about that at all. Um, the preamps sound fantastic. Um, you can drive them really hard. There's masses of headroom. Um, I don't think I've ever had any digital clipping on my input channels or on my output channels for that matter. But it's never. I've, I've never had to go, oh, I'm on the edge here. I need to start thinking about my gain structure and backing things down a bit progressively so I can get back into a comfort zone it's it's really forgiving in, in the same sort of way that that um that an analog console is so having been on both platforms um i can tell you it's it's very very natural in terms of workflow and 
and um, I definitely invite you to give it a shot. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Thank you for that, Val. Uh, I think we answered most questions. Uh, if we haven't answered a specific question, rest assured that we will get back to some of you uh, separately uh, and individually. Uh, there's one about redundant power supplies. I'm afraid we don't uh, offer redundant power supplies for Avantis, uh, but I think that's all from me. So from my side, thank you all for joining us today. Thank you, Val, for, for the presentation. Yep, thank you very much. I hope you have a very nice day wherever you may be and stay safe. And we look forward to seeing you in real life as soon as we possibly can. Goodbye. Bye. Thanks.